our friend Mr. Chip Foose. Chip, great to see you again. Nice to see you as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Chip Foose. And a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it is a pleasure to have you again as well. So, I am looking at this stunning 57 Chevy convertible, and I saw the stance on that thing before, and I understand we didn't want to risk, like I said earlier, high-siding this thing on the ramp. Yeah, we weren't sure if it would clear, so we just go out front. That's right, buddy. We'll just... Closer nice to the people. <laughs> bring it to the people. So this thing is gorgeous, man. Tell us Thank about Thank you it. very much. Well, actually, we were working on a Jaguar to bring to SEMA, mm -hmm. and we were waiting for parts. And about 10 weeks ago, we decided we can't wait any longer. So we pulled this one out of the lineup that was in the shop, said, we'll get that one done for SEMA. So, so you wait, let, you know, you've heard it here first, people, even Chip Foose waits for parts. So we all <laughs> yes. know the pain. They're coming from England. They come from all over the place. And it's a great sign that people are buying a lot of parts because, you know, they're not in ready to, you know, uh, available inventory all over the place, especially one-off stuff and weird Jaguar parts. Yes, so. it's been great. So, like I say, we pulled this out of the, lineman, uh, the lineup and we jumped on it and got it finished and brought it here. And, uh, you know, it... You may not believe it, but yesterday morning, there were no doors, front fender, hood. Uh, the top was just finished Sunday morning. Uh, it's been a crazy last, shall we say, four days getting this car done and getting it here. Oh, I can no interior at all yesterday morning. It, so. it looks like it's been done forever, but that's, <laughs> that's part of the stories behind a lot of cars that debut here at SEMA is that this deadline doesn't change. No. You know, you can't call everybody up and say, yes, yeah, SEMA, no, no, we're going to do it next week. Well, I get asked all the time, how come you wait till the last minute? We're not waiting till the last minute. We're using every last minute right, right, to right. get it done and get it here. Well, it looks beautiful. And how many people in your team were working on this to uh, all hours of the night? Well, Friday morning, I told everybody there was 10 of us there. And if you look at the average workday, which is eight hours, then each guy has a, possible of, a possibility of working three work days in one 24-hour period. So I told the guys, we've got three days, so that's basically you've got nine days each. In the and with 10 days. of us, Friday morning, we had 90 days left to get this done in here today, and we made it. You made it, absolutely. <laughs> so tell me about the car. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. Well, uh, the color is just something that I had made up, but the uh, you know. body is, the only modifications that we made to the body is we straightened out the front fenders and the doors and the rear quarters because if you look down the sides of a typical Tri-5 car, they're all rounded. And yep. you look down the moldings and they've got a, a you know quite a, quite a bit of curve to the body side. We straightened all that out, reskinned the doors, shaved and cut the front fenders, and then also uh, shrunk the rear quarters. Then we took that stock body and put it on a Roadster Shop chassis. It's got an LS motor that's dressed to look like an older motor. And then it's all leather interior, so it's not, you know, the vinyl that was stock. But it's all leather and done in a design that looks similar to the stock design. But we built it for Mike Malone out of uh, Pasadena, California. And he's excited to start driving it. The wheels are a one-off set that mimic the original hubcap, but they're 18s front and rear. And uh, I'm excited to get it done and share it with the people here. Yeah, and it's funny, you casually mention, eh, it's a color I made up. Eh, we straighten the fenders. Eh, straighten the quarters. There's a lot of work that went into those modifications. There's, there's a lot of work. But, uh, you know, without all the vendors and the people helping, we couldn't get it done. And I've got a fantastic team at Foos Design. And we weren't only finishing this, but we did a C7, 1967 C10 pickup that's in the 3M booth. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like I say, we're excited to be here. And that one's kind of an SS themed truck, Z28 kind well, of thing. Well, the whole theme behind the the truck is I found an original 1967 Z28 Camaro motor. And there were fewer than 500 of these Z28 Camaros made in 1967. So that motor is a rare motor and quite valuable. And the first thought is, I need to put this in a Camaro. Only makes sense. Well, I thought, what if General Motors built a sport truck back then and they used all the Z28 Camaro parts? So I put this motor in. I was going to put the four-speed Muncie. I had all the correct parts. I wanted to make it look like it was all original factory parts and that this truck could have been built from the factory. But I went ahead and put a Bowler uh, five-speed mm. Tremec transmission in to get that extra gear for the freeway because I built it for myself. It's yep. my, my daily driver. 
we put a Hotchkiss suspension on it, dropped it down two inches, and then of course bringing it here to SEMA, I couldn't have rally wheels with stock tires on it. So it's got the Pirelli tires and a one-off set of Foose wheels. And uh, I'm excited to share that with everybody here this week as well. Very cool. So the truck is in 3M? Truck is in 3M. The 57 will be in BASF's booth. And I'm going to be everywhere checking out everything. I was going to say, you uh, probably want to be in the backseat of sleep right now. But <laughs> <laughs> you look great. You're standing. Well, Congratulations. We went, we went three days with no sleep and uh, got home at 7.30 this morning, took a two-hour nap and got up and we drove over here. Yeah, that's the dedication, man. And it, it, the great thing is you are in one of the few places in the world where you're not alone. Because no. so many builders have been putting in those hours and so many people building displays and building the SEMA show have all been awake, you know, and it's because this is such a vibrant event. Everybody's got to be here and you got to make it happen. And you guys did it. It's a small industry. You get to know everybody. But when you come here, it's like, it's not as small as I thought it was. <laughs> no, 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 no. And the other thing is I feel so lucky and blessed to be able to make a living doing something 100% unnecessary. <laughs> awesome. You know, the world doesn't need a car like this. Yeah, right. It's not food. But the greatest thing about it is it's 100% passion driven. It and that's why we're all here. You got it, man. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Big round of a hand Thanks for that everybody. thought. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Chip Foos with some wonderful thoughts about the passion of all the things we do here, especially at the SEMA show.